Hey everybody, Jake here. And today I want to talk real quick about why you would spend almost $700 on a fountain pen or, or anything like this really. Um, <clears throat> because for me at least, it, it was a big step buying this pen. Uh, this is the Conid Antwerp pen. Um, after tax and everything, I came. I think it came out to about six hundred and seventy U.S. dollars uh, with a steel nib. So, and I'm still kind of on the fence about that. And I'll talk about that a little bit and uh, buying outside of your comfort zone and things like that. But before we we touch on that, what makes this pen worth that much? If it is worth that much, you know, um, there's a couple things that increase the price of this pen. Uh, first one's going to be the material. As you can see here, it's it's a really cool, interesting resin. It's a material called Juma. They use it occasionally in uh, knife handles and things like that. But it's a really, really cool material. It looks almost like scales, uh, like reptile scales in certain places. Um, but it's it's a really, really gorgeous material. This pen is beautiful in person. And um, I, I really can't stress that enough. Uh, next thing up is going to be all, all the uh, titanium on this pen instead of being sta uh, stainless steel or anything like that. All of the hardware on this pen is titanium apart from the nib. Um, I do plan on getting a titanium nib just to match everything. But that includes the internal uh, filling mechanism. And the filling mechanism contributes to that as well. Um, the filling mechanism in this pen is called the bulk filler. And I will actually get out some paperwork real quick to show you what that looks like. And uh, while I'm doing that, I'm going to show you another reason this pen is so expensive, and that's the packaging. So it comes in the sleeve. It's going to be a little hard to see because of how the camera is situated. I apologize, my uh, main camera is out of commission at the moment. Um, so it comes in this really, really cool little aluminum case that is custom made for the Antwerp pen. And um, these are only sold in Belgium. There's two stores in Belgium, Antwerp, that you can get this. You get a little um, certificate of authenticity with it. Then we'll get to the actual box. I'll go over this more in the uh, full review of this pen. But just to show you real quick, you get some paperwork. And then here is the actual um, the mechanism information itself. Um, so I'll kind of scroll up to show you um, kind of what it is. I can lay it down here and you can get a decent look. So what it actually is is a mixture of a, a vacuum filler, kind of. And a piston filler. It's a very compact piston filler. It takes up a, a fraction of this pen space that one does on like a Twisby or something like that. Now it does that is the actual piston, the part that sucks up the ink, um, is normally sitting at the back and is detached from the knob. So the first thing you have to do is unscrew the back, pull the knob up, and twist it into place to lock that. Then you push back down and then you suck back up to fill up with ink. Um, there are, of course, more steps on the back to kind of show you. So this filling mechanism is unique to Conid to a degree. Uh, Pen BBS have done something similar. Um, I'm not really going to get into that too much, but you know, it's it's a it's a similar mechanism. But what you're paying for really is is that that invention, that innovation, and you do get some extra hardware. Um, with normal coined pens, this is a little bit extra for the uh, disassembly tools, but you get a uh, hex key and this to un unscrew the uh, bulk filler mechanism. So you get that very, very fancy packaging. You get, and, and when you're buying something expensive, a, a good chunk of it is typically presentation. Like this pen would probably be 150 to $200 less if it didn't have this fancy box with it which some people care about, some people don't. <clears throat> but that's part of what you're paying for. And the next thing's gonna be the quality. It's just, it's really, really well made. Honestly, it's uh, almost breathtaking. And lastly, the writing quality. Of the, again, this is a steel nib, but I will say this is probably the smoothest nib I've ever wrote with in my entire life. I'm almost hesitant to upgrade it, but I'm, I'm going to. But yeah, it, so it's just a regular coned medium steel nib. Now, now that you know a little bit about the pen and why it costs so much, most people probably wouldn't buy this, and I, I think that's completely reasonable. Um, again, I'm I'm really on the fence about buying this myself. I already have, but you know about reselling it because it's a lot of money to have in one object. Well, 
I was conflicted about the purchase in general. I went into the store and I tried it out and it it was just it's perfect. You know, it's perfect size, uh, perfect riding experience. I'm getting used to the filling mechanism. I'm trying to, to play with it a bit. But it's a very, very good pen um, overall. But is it worth, you know, almost $700? Really comes down to the person. <laughs> At this point, uh, I've learned that I've, I've steadily gotten more and more expensive with uh, my pens and my knives and things like that. But there's there's going to be a cap for everybody that I think you're inevitably going to hit, and I think I've hit that cap. I don't really think I would be comfortable spending much more than this. Um, there's one exception to that, which is like a, a, a grail pen to me, which this was actually one of those anyway, but this one was attainable. Um... But it's a lot of it's a lot of financial burden to have this sitting in your collection. And what I mean by that is, say you're a little short on money, not you know like rent or anything, but say there's a couple of new pens coming out that you want to get. Well, the first thing that you're going to look at is going to be your expensive stuff. Okay, there's three pens coming out that are two hundred dollars each. If I sell this, I could buy all of them. You know that kind of thing. So it makes it a precarious and dangerous spot in most people's collections. And it's kind of sitting there for me, too. I, I don't know yet. I'm I'm really trying to think hard about it because these are rather difficult to, to get used. Um, so it's 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 difficult. It, it's, it's a dangerous pen for me to own just because I don't know if I'm going to keep it or not. But it's it's gorgeous. It writes perfectly. It's just a large amount of money to have invested in something. And when you're starting out in fountain pens, it, it can be very daunting to look at something like this and go, God, that's, you know, that's ridiculously expensive, which it is. It's a lot easier to justify the price of, say, a Lamy Safari or a Pilot Metropolitan. And a Lamy Safari was my first fountain pen. And at the time, I thought it was expensive. It was $18. It was a lot for a pen. Obviously, I've grown past that to a degree, but I still try to keep my fountain pen purchases sub 300 typically, um, just because stuff like this just gets to that level of me being almost uncomfortable to carry it. So you have to take that stuff into consideration. And there's some people that would buy this and be happy to just display it. I'm not one of those people. If I buy something, I plan on using it. So I have to be comfortable using whatever I'm using. Um, you know, a lot of people would be scared to touch something this expensive. And I get where they're coming from because I've seen stuff like the uh, the Pilot 100th Anniversary, you know, collection that's forty thousand dollars. I would be terrified to touch to even touch those pens or be in the same room as them. You know, uh, this is a, a little different. This is kind of on the border for me, just because this is not not by a ton. It's it's the most expensive pen that I've had. The second most expensive one I've had is the Pelican um, M800. I'm sorry, M805 Ocean Swirl which was about $150 less than this. But they're both very, very good pens. And while I don't think I'm going to ever get rid of either of them, they're always on the proverbial chopping block when it comes to me thinking about stuff like, you know, selling them to make room in my collection for other pens. And what it really comes down to, and everyone's going to have a different answer, what it really comes down to is can you afford it? That's very important. And will you use it? Also important. And do you like it? Um, if you're going to spend e even $50 on a pen, make sure you have the money for it. Make sure you would use it and make sure that you like it. That's for anything. And that scales up that price range. Um, but as you get higher up, there's that, that kind of fourth um, intangible factor, which is how much are you willing to spend on something? Not even spend and carry or spend and abuse it. How much are you willing to spend on something to own it? And I've run into that a little bit with this. Um, I had the money. I was in the right place at the right time. And I went ahead and got it. But now it's, it's strange. If I saw this pen again, I would not buy it. But it's... I don't know, it's just, it's kind of odd. And I feel that way about some of my higher-end purchases already. Um, 
it's there's just a lot of money tied up in them and they start to get sentimental value and things like that and it makes them more difficult to sell and I'm trying to shrink down my collection a bit but stuff like this is kind of what I'm going after in the long run anyway so I'm like I said, I'm kind of on the fence about it yes it's a lot of money however I've been trying to make my collection more refined and only on stuff that I will use and I'll carry I've been trying to sell off more and more things that I don't use and that I don't carry and um, it's it's difficult but I think it's an important part of of any hobby is to keep it down to things that you actually care about so should you spend this much money on a pen it really comes down to you um, I know that's not a great answer for everyone for most people I'm gonna say no don't um, but if you have the money you have the means and you have the will no one's stopping you you know and I will say before I even get to the review of this pen which is probably gonna be a month or two out because I really really want to use it a lot to see if it justifies that price um, before I even get to the review of this pen though I've got to say it's it's amazing it's it's stellar but it is very very expensive but thank you for tuning in if you have any questions um, or anything like that you know let me know down in the comments and I would also love to know um, what your own kind of personal comfortable price ranges are for things I find that very interesting like I said mine's normally the 150 to to I'd say probably 150 to 250 definitely sub $300 um, price range is about the height of my comfort level um, depending on certain factors but I, I would love to know yours personally and um, also what pen in your collection has if any have ever made you kind of wary about even owning it but yeah uh, thanks for tuning in guys and I hope you enjoyed the video bye